Right, good evening and welcome to Soul Surge tonight. Hope you're staying safe and staying warm. You know, the municipality yesterday uh, released statistics that Mossel Bay is currently uh, has the highest uh, COVID positive active cases in the whole of the garden route. So please, let's, let's live cautiously, let's live carefully, not in fear, but we need to live wisely in these, uh, in these, these times. Tonight, there's gonna to be giveaways, uh, two one kilo packs of Biltong. This was uh, in honor of Father's Day last week. Remember last week, uh, Wednesday, we gave away KFC vouchers for the, for the youth, but um, we're gonna do Father's Day gifts today. So there'll be two one kilo packs of Biltong at the end of the show. You don't have to be a dad to get it, but uh, just listen in and you'll get the information later on. Tonight we're discussing walls. And uh, when I was thinking and preparing for tonight, there's only one song that, uh, that I wanted to play. And that's Walls by Gateway Worship. Listen to the words of the song.
Great song, great words, and we're going to get into some, uh, some more about the walls uh, in a short time. But first, we go into our section on the fruits of the Spirit. And tonight we're going offshore for our uh, teacher. Uh, many of you know him, uh, Steve Adair in the UK. Over to you, Steve. Hi, folks. It's, uh, it's really nice to uh, be addressing you again after such a long time. Um, but Zane has asked me to preach or to speak about peace, the fruit of the Spirit. Um, and the particular one he's asked me to do is peace. So I wanted just to, 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 to share a few thoughts on that. And the first one is, what exactly is peace? One of my favourite illustrations of peace is a, a story of a painting competition. Um, artists were invited to, to enter this competition and they, would, they were asked to paint uh, a scene that depicted peace. And so most people entered um, nice, calm scenes, beautiful lakes and flowers and uh, countryside, everything calm and peaceful. But one man entered a picture which was completely contrast to that. It, it was a picture of the coast, but it was a picture of the coast in a storm. The, the, the wind was blowing, it was howling, and the, the waves were lashing against the cliffs of the, of the, of the land. There were storm clouds all over, and it was a chaotic scene. So when the, the judges came round, they asked this guy, what were you thinking? Because, you know, we asked you to paint a picture of peace, and yet you've painted a storm and chaos. And he said, look here. And he took his finger and he pointed into a crag in the rock. And in the crag, there was a nest. And on the nest, there was a bird. And he said, the bird is at peace whilst there's turmoil all around. And that, my friends, is what I believe Jesus or God is talking about in the Bible when he says that he wants us to be at peace. I believe that Jesus is, is, is speaking about a peace which surpasses all understanding. He's talking about a peace which gives us assurance and confidence even in those times when there is chaos and turmoil all around us. Peace for me is maintaining your assurance and your confidence even at times when you don't understand what is happening around you or even to you. And so I want to give some examples of peace and I believe that the person that is our best example of peace is Jesus himself. You remember that time when Jesus was walking about the town and the scribes and the Pharisees came and they brought a woman with them and they caught her in adultery and they wanted to trap Jesus. Either she's guilty of adultery and we need to stone her to death, which means that Jesus would then have to deny compassion and love, or he would express compassion and love and would have to abandon following the law. They thought they had him and there was a, a real, it was a real point of tension that they were trying to create. But even in the midst of that turmoil and that conflict, Jesus, what did he do? He kept, kept his peace and he, he just stood down and he started writing in the sand, didn't he? started writing and I, I, I don't know what he was writing but we just asked them okay any one of, one of you that is without sin should cast the first stone and I believe as he wrote words like I don't know adultery lust um, greed people were looking at those words and they knew they weren't without sin and then one by one they left and eventually when Jesus looked up he said to the lady where are your accusers and they said she said, then they're not here, they're all gone. And he says, well, neither will I condemn you. And you should go and sin no more. You see, peace isn't an, opposite, an absence of fear. It's not um, an absence of 
turmoil. It's not an absence of being in difficult situations. Peace is all about maintaining assurance and confidence in God, no matter what is happening to you or around you. The last thing I wanted to focus on then is, is how do we attain this kind of peace? First of all, I want to just say that there are two types of peace, really, that we need to attain. The first is peace with God. Paul says in Romans 5, verses 1 to 2, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Jesus has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We have peace with God by entering into a relationship with God. We're made one with God. Our sin is dealt with and our relationship with God is, is assured. And at peace with God is the first step in attaining the peace of God. Peace of God is this peace that we see is as a fruit of the Spirit. It's born out of a relationship with God. And just as fruit takes time to grow, peace and all of the other fruits of the Spirit also take time to grow. And we need to be spending time with God. Relationships don't just happen. We need to build those relationships. And, and, and we need to spend time with God in his presence. And that means, for me, that means we need to be spending time in prayer. It means we need to be spending time in worship. And I don't mean in church worship, in corporate worship. I mean we need to spend time in, in private devotion, private worship with God. But we also need to spend time in the Word of God. In the Word of God, this is where God will instruct us. As we read the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will testify to us, quickening words to us, quickening verses to us bringing out truths and making them real to us, that we would own them, that we would be assured by them, that we would apply them directly to our own lives. In the scriptures, we see there are a lot of secrets that only those people in relationship with God can share. And we can see these in the Bible. They're identified by these two very simple words. We know. Romans 8, verse 28 we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and those called according to his purpose. We know all things work together for our good. And if we know that, and we know it, not just here, but we know it here, or as Zane often says, we know it here, we know it in our knower, that all things work together for our good, then we attain perfect peace thanks for listening i hope this will have inspired you in some ways but be careful with your relationship with god spend time in prayer spend time in worship spend time in god's word thanks for your input steve and from all your friends and family here at new life uh, we, we just want to send our love to you to helen and to the family in 1994, when Eric and I arrived here at the church in Mossel Bay, um, I remember the first series that I did was, was walls. I used a, back then you didn't have a video projector, you didn't have a fancy TV, so we had what was called an overhead projector, which you, you wrote on a piece of plastic, and what it did is it just uh, projected that onto the screen. And I had bricks, just had a wall of bricks and they were white bricks because it was just black on white. And uh, in every brick, I started putting a characteristic, a trait that, uh, has to, that we need in our lives to build up our strength in God. I believe God told me that, look, the church had been through a lot. The pastor that was here before us had suffered from a stroke. He'd been out of the ministry for nine months, couldn't preach for nine months. And I believe God just said, you need to build up the church. The church needs to be strengthened. And so um, I had this idea. And in every brick, we put a, a characteristic or a trait 
that, that we need to strengthen within ourselves so that we can become strong in God. Uh, for instance, there was a brick in one of the bricks. There was uh, faith. And then in the another brick, there was trust. There was hope. And then joy, and peace, uh, perseverance, uh, self-control. All these things, every brick uh, was filled in with one of those. And eventually, the, the series lasted a couple of weeks. And I think we covered about uh, 12 or 15 bricks. But that, that's the whole idea was that it's brick upon brick. Uh, to build a wall. And we still need to do that. We still need to be building ourselves up in our inner man, in our inner strength, so that we can become strong in God. Walls can be good and walls can be bad. There are walls that help. There are walls and walls that hurt us. And we're going to look at four different ones quickly uh, tonight. For instance, walls protect if you look at the Great Wall of China, Google says that it was built over 3,000 years ago. Uh, Google says it's, it's over 21,000 kilometers long as it snakes down up the valleys and, and, and the mountains and the, the, the mountain ranges that are in China and over the, the, the plains. 21,000 kilometers. And uh, it was built to protect the Chinese uh, people. Uh, they protect them from the nomadic uh, tribes that uh, came from the north, the Mongols that came in, pillaged, plundered, stole, uh, and just destroyed the Chinese uh, people. So it was built as a wall for protection. Nehemiah, if we look at Nehemiah, Nehemiah, come, his whole life's ministry is going from Babylon back to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls because the walls of Jerusalem had been broken down. The enemy had come in, the enemy had plundered and destroyed and stolen and uh, the walls needed to, be, needed to be rebuilt so that the people's lives could be rebuilt, so that the temple also could be rebuilt, so that their relationship with God could be rebuilt. Uh, but the walls had to be built up um, strong again. Proverbs 25, there's a fascinating scripture. Proverbs 25, it says that a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. A city with broken down walls meant that the enemy could just come in and do what they wanted to do. They could just come in and pillage and steal and rob. Uh, a city without walls was exposed, it was vulnerable. And um, the enemy could come in and just take what it wanted to do. And that's what the devil wants to do with us. He wants to come in and destroy our lives, just mess up our lives, trash our lives. We've been created in the image and the likeness of God. In other words, our security, our self-worth, our significance is found in God. It's not found in places, it's not found in positions, it's not found in power, it's not found in wealth, but it's found in God. It's based in God. And we need to, to build up our inner man, become strong. These characteristic, these character walls, security of self-worth, of, of significance must be built up within us and we need to grow and become strong in God. So we need strong walls within us that can help protect us from the wiles of the enemy. Secondly, walls divide. I have a piece here that it looks like rubble. For a lot of people, it would just look like rubble and they throw it away. But for me, it's very precious because this piece of rubble comes from a wall that divided a nation. It came from the Berlin Wall. It's a piece of friend of mine, John Stegman, in the early 90s. In fact, just after the, the wall had come down, the Berlin Wall had come down, uh, he went over to West Germany and he came back with a few of these pieces and he gave me one. And... Uh, I've never, I've kept it all the time because it speaks a lot to me. The Berlin Wall divided, divided, uh, it divided family, it divided, for those of you that don't know the history, I mean, it was just one night in 1961 where the East German army came in overnight and laid down uh, barbed wire and then immediately started um, building the wall. Uh, the wall 
uh, was 155 kilometers long, four meters tall, and the communist side, the East German side, said that they were doing it to protect themselves from the culture and the corruption of the West. It didn't just divide a community or a country, but it divided the world, East from the West. It brought division. Paul writes in the Bible and says that there are dividing walls between Jews and Gentiles. The Bible is clear on how the Jews and the Samaritans hated each other. There were walls of division, walls of separation between them. Racism is a wall that divides countries and divides communities still today. In South Africa, the laws were, were, were against racism was taken, were taken out of the law books in 1994, but there's still a lot of walls of racism in the hearts of mankind today. A generation gap can be a wall that divides old from young. Teenagers look at older people and don't want to mix with them because they don't understand them, because they're weird, and I guess we are. But the older people also look at teenagers or younger people and think uh, they're weird. At New Life, we're building a generational church because I believe that's God's will. I believe in a healthy Family in God's forever family, you're going to have babies, you're going to have young children, you're going to have teenagers, you're going to have young adults, you're going to have middle age, you're going to have, and you're going to have seniors. That's what I believe God wants in his family, in his forever family. And so that's what we are building at New Life. And uh, that means we need tolerance, we need patience with each other, but it's possible. And those walls, if there's any generational walls in our hearts, they need to come down. Xenophobia is a wall that divides us from them, foreigners. They don't, maybe they don't talk like us, they don't dress like us, they don't look like us. So we build up a wall, us and them. That's not right. Jesus played a different, he played a different set of, of rules. He spent one day, he spent half a day talking to a Samaritan woman at a well, just breaking down walls. He crossed the culture walls by spending time going into the homes of Gentiles, eating with them, mingling with them. Jesus loved breaking down walls. And in 1989, the Berlin Wall came down and maybe there's a few walls in your life that God might want you to bring down, to take down. Thirdly, walls hide. I, watched, I remember seeing a news a few years ago, watching a news on TV, and uh, they, they were showing the house of a, of a so-called drug lord. I think it was down in Cape Town somewhere. But you couldn't see the house. It was just massive walls around the house. And you were sort of thinking, well, what's he hiding behind there? Walls can hide. And sometimes we hide behind walls of shame, walls of addiction, walls of poverty, walls of perversion, walls of failure, walls of grief, walls of hurt. We build these walls and we hide behind them. In Galatians 5.1, the Bible says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. God doesn't want us living, hiding behind walls. Your unresolved past will sink your future if you hide behind walls and not deal with the issues. Christine Kane said this. She said, what we don't reveal, he cannot heal. Great scripture in the Bible that says people who conceal or people who hide their sins will not prosper. But if they confess and turn from them, then they will receive mercy. God loves you. God has best intentions for you. But hiding our sins is not the way to go. We need to come out from behind those walls and confess and reveal to God what it is in our lives that we don't want, what we know is unpleasing to Him. And we need to confess them. And then we can walk in God's forgiveness in God's grace, 
in God's mercy, in God's favor, in God's blessing. And then number four, there are walls that uh, are roadblocks to, to God's uh, promises and God's blessings. Take, for instance, Jericho. I mean, the children of God have, 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 have finally come into the promised land. And remember, the promised land was a, place, was a better place, a better life. That's what God had promised them. They come into the promised land, and first in front of them is a big city, a walled city, a stronghold called Jericho. Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 30, it says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. And I want to share, uh, in, a, in a few Sundays' time, I want to share a, w- a word entitled Six Steps to Fall a Wall, based on what Joshua did, so that the walls of Jericho, to make the walls of Jericho fall down. But we need to know that walls or strongholds need to be broken down in our lives if we want to inherit, if we want to go beyond Jericho to inherit the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because if that wall, if Jericho if it still stands, then we can't inherit what God wants for us. And sometimes Jericho means a stronghold of hurt from past events. Uh, it might mean a wall of fear might mean a stronghold of anger that controls your life. It might be a, a wall of just low self-worth. Stronghold of hatred, maybe. A stronghold of bitterness or resentment, of unforgiveness. But these are strongholds. These are walls that need to come down so that we can go beyond and inherit and enjoy the life that God wants us to enjoy. Jesus died for us to live that life, the life that he said he came to give us an abundant life. Let me recap quickly. So there are walls that protect, and we need those strong walls within us, within ourselves, within our inner man. We need to build up those strong walls, build up our faith, build up our trust, build up our hope. We need to be strong in all those areas. But there are walls that divide, and these walls need to be broken down. And then there are also walls that hide. And we need to come out from behind those walls. Things in our lives, conduct in our lives, habits in our lives, that we need to come out from behind those walls and confess them and reveal them to God so that he can begin the healing process. And fourthly, there are walls that are roadblocks, strongholds, Preventing us from inheriting what God wants for us. They need to come down so that we can move on and enjoy the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I hope this has helped. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you again tonight for your love, your mercy, your compassion. Thank you for your patience, Lord. Thank you for all the walls you've broken down in my life, Father. And I pray, Lord God, that you will show us any more walls, Lord, that need to come down. Help us also become strong in ourselves, Father God. We do not want the enemy to come in and to plunder and to rob and to steal that which you have given us. Pray, Father God, that your word will encourage us, your word will bless us, your word will strengthen us. And I pray, Father God, that you'll keep us safe, keep us from all harm, keep us from all evil, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, before we close tonight, uh, just a reminder, two one kilo packs of Beltong. We vacuum packed it to keep it nice and safe and fresh. And uh, listen, there's a Lions tour, a British and Irish Lions tour coming up, rugby tour coming up soon. And I know that uh, there's going to be a lot of chewing. It's going to be a tough series. And uh, this is coming just in time for that. So if you want to get it for yourself or for your dad, uh, all you need to do is WhatsApp your name and your cell phone number to the church number. And uh, you need to do that between half past uh, seven tonight and half past eight. 
And what we're going to do is, my, my dad's birthday was on the 3rd of May, 3rd of the 5th. So we're going to take the 3rd and the 5th uh, num names that come through on our list. And uh, we will contact you by 9 o'clock tonight if you can come and collect one of these one kilo packs of biltong um, during office hours at the church. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Stay warm. Stay positive. Stay strong. Keep shining for Jesus.